Today I'm going to be demonstrating this flamingo that I have drawn in colored pencil. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. Today's work is being done completely in colored pencil. I have worked on Fabriano Artistico Extra White Hot Press 140 pound watercolor paper. I used both Polychromos and Luminance colored pencils and one Derwent Drawing Chinese White Pencil, which turns out to be pretty handy when you want really opaque white. If you are supporters over on Patreon, the two hour version of this video is available for you guys now, complete with voiceover tutorial. So make sure to head over and check that out. Now let's get on to this tutorial. Getting started on this guy, I am working on the background. I'm using a very light hand. Notice how far back my hand is on that pencil. It helps me to make sure that I'm not pushing too hard. I don't wanna to push too hard too early on or I will flatten the tooth of the paper, which will prevent me from doing as many layers as I'm going to need. So after about three layers, I am blending that out with Mona Lisa odorless paint thinner. Any odorless mineral spirit should work for you. I let that dry and then I'm moving on to my second layer, batch of layers, I guess I should say. There's about three or four more layers before I blend out with paint thinner again. Now, if you're trying the paint thinner method to blend and you're having trouble getting your colors dark enough or enough saturation on the paper, more often than not, this is caused from not having enough colored pencil on the paper. I have multiple layers before I ever blend with the, the paint thinner. I've recently tried Gamsol, which is another odorless mineral spirit that I know is more widely available in the UK, and that one worked just fine as well. So if you can't find the Mona Lisa, the Gamsol should work just fine. Sorry about the lines going through the video, that should stop soon. Good news is I think I figured out what's causing that and how to prevent it from future happening in future videos. So I've done multiple layers here to make sure that I get everything really dark. I want the there to be a lot of saturation in my background. And I just layer on top of layer until I get the color where I want. Now for the feathers, this is very much like working on flowers. I'm looking at all of this more as abstract shapes and just copying my reference photo. This reference photo comes from wildlifereferencephotos.com. I don't normally copy reference photos exactly, but I just loved this one and was all excited to recreate it myself, so I didn't really change much from that reference photo. Now these feathers in the background are pretty blurry and out of focus, so I'm not gonna put a lot of sharp, crisp detail. There's a lot of busyness going on in here with multiple different colors, which are listed below in the video description. But as far as the actual sharp detail, I'm gonna keep that for the feathers that are going to be up close and more in focus. These I'm keeping very soft. So now here I'm moving on to the next batch of feathers and what I usually do is work on an area, get it pretty close to done and then move on to another area and then go back to the first area. What happens is until I get the colors and the values around any given zone, it makes it harder for me to judge my values for the part that I'm working on. So if I work my way out, I can go back and add more detail and clean up areas on the first areas I was working on. It also helps give my eyes a break so that I don't start losing my place if I'm staring at the same square inch for too long. So I do like to jump around quite a bit as I work. Now to start with, I'm just blocking in loosely the colors that I'm going to want where my lights and my darks are. The colors themselves aren't exact. That will come later. I need to make sure that I start out lighter than I think I'm going to need to go. If I go too dark, it's really hard to lighten things up. I did find on this piece though, I used the Derwent Drawing Chinese White for the first time. That pencil is amazing. And I will do a video comparing different white pencils for you guys later on. But for now, I will tell you that is on my must have list of colored pencil supplies, the Derwent Drawing Chinese White. It is not a replacement for the Luminance White, but it's a very soft, very opaque lead. It's really good for soft blending. I like the Luminance White much better for smaller details though. So here, again, I'm just copying my reference photo. There are just so many abstract shapes in here. I'm not looking at them as feathers. I'm looking at the abstract shapes. And if you're having a hard time doing that and convincing your brain to see the shapes as shapes, flip your work upside down. That will help quite a bit. 
if you don't have all the same colors I do, it's not that big of a deal. You can still make beautiful, very realistic work if you have a smaller set of colored pencils. The key here is to pay attention to your values, how lights your, light your lights are and how dark your darks are. That is what's going to make your piece look more realistic. You don't have to have all the colors in the world. So moving on to the next section, I am first just blocking in a medium tone. I believe I used cinnamon for my base, and then I'm layering pinks and oranges on top of that. Blending that out with a paint thinner, I am using a Taclon bristled filbert brush for most of the blending. That is a number eight. I will switch to smaller numbers, I believe they're number threes and fours, for flat brushes when I need finer detail or small round brushes. But all of the brushes that I use are the Taclon bristled brushes. And I'm just slowly building up more and more detail. And on this one, a lot of my shading is done with a magenta pencil, which looks really nice up against oranges. Where I'm using browns, I'm going very, very sparingly with that. If you go too heavy with browns and grays on this, they're just going to stand out too much and it'll look like everything's outlined. When I use the browns and the grays, it's just in teeny tiny little areas just to darken up the darkest points. But most of the shading is going to be done with the different oranges, reds, and magenta pencils. You can see that brown there. It's just in little teeny tiny points. So again, I start out with just getting a base layer. I go around and add some details few more layers and then I will blend it out with colored pencil once it dries. Now do make sure if you're using the paint thinner, let it dry in between layers because if you try to work your pencil over a wet area, it can damage the tooth of the paper. So let it dry before you work, move on. Now how long that's going to take to dry completely depends on how much paint thinner is on your brush and what type of paper you're using. I usually use quite a bit of paint thinner on the brush for my first few times of blending out with the paint thinner, but my later layers, I will dab most of that off on a paper towel. And I use Viva paper towels or an old cloth. Regular Viva paper towels like Bounty, those don't absorb the paint thinner right, so they are not the way you want to go. If using paper towels, use Viva. Otherwise, an old t-shirt works fine. So you can see I've taken the white pencil to pull out a lot of the little details, the little teeny tiny feather hairs that are sticking out all over the place. But then those aren't going to be white white because I didn't let the white of the paper show through. So in order to make them stand out more, I'm going to take a darker pencil and go in between some of those little white lines to make the white appear to be brighter. It's all about getting your contrast in there. And a lot of those white lines, I was just so happy with that Derwent drawing, Chinese, I just did not say that right. Derwent drawing Chinese white. I wish that had a shorter name. So I have a feeling I'm going to be saying it a lot. Now, the feathers that I was working on on the underneath the beak here, I was having a hard time judging my values. I know they needed to be quite dark, but up against the white of the paper, I was not going dark enough. So I decided I needed to stop with the feathers for a bit and move up to the beak, get all of the dark areas blocked in on that beak so that I could better judge the values underneath it. So I've used various shades of blacks and grays, and then I'm using white to pull out some highlights. I don't need any of that to stay white white. If I needed some of that beak area to be very, very white, I would have put white down first. But because I just needed to add highlights, I could take the white on top of the black. So now I can move on to these feathers where it's much easier for me to see how dark I need to go. This is the same that I do when I'm working on portraits. I will usually get the hair or the darkest zones in the portrait done first, just because it makes it so much easier for me to judge the rest of my values. So moving on to this section of the beak, there it's pretty much just the same colors that I used in the feathers. They're just a bit darker. So we'll paying close attention again to the reference photo for all of these little details. Remember when you're working in colored pencil, make sure your drawing is completely 100% perfect and very accurate before you ever start with the colored pencil. If you find out that you drew the beak wrong, you can't really fix that easily. Like with paint, you can just paint over it. With colored pencil, you don't really have that option. It won't work right. So you want to make sure everything is drawn perfect before you ever start. 
Notice the white portion of the beak isn't really white. It's various shades of gray. Very little in your work is going to have white white. It is normally going to be reflecting colors around it. And in this case, this portion of his head is completely cast in shadow, so there, that is going to be a lot darker. For his eye, there isn't really a highlight on here because it is also cast in shadow. I've got the darker section on the top and a little bit lighter at the bottom. I'm starting by blocking in my dark sections first. I'm using a darker, it's almost a brick red color here, and then adding the lighter colored pencil right over that. I'm putting the light colored pencil over the white paper and over the brick red that I previously did. And this just pulls the colors together better so it's not too, the contrast won't be too harsh this way. Blending that out with paint thinner. Now when I say blending, it's not really smudging the color together. I'm just dissolving the color that I have on the paper into the paper. So I need to make sure that I've got any blending that I do need, any overlapping of color is done with the pencils themselves. Now I'm using a peach color, which I believe, I want to say it's a something ochre 10%. It's not actually called peach. It's listed in the video description. But I'm using that to add the little detailed feathers on his head. And then for the lighter areas, I'm using the Derwent Drawing Chinese White for those feathers. Now that is going to make it very white and very muted. So I take another color in between the lightest areas and start adding in more details this way. And that pulls the richness back out in the, the color that I previously had. A little bit more detailing here. Now I did go back through when it was finished with some magenta and a very bright orange to hype up a little bit of the contrast and some of the shadows in the feathers on the body. But that is not caught on video. And that is it for this guy. Again, if you want to draw this yourself, the reference photo is available for purchase over at wildlifereferencephotos.com. Thanks for watching. Again, if you are supporters over on Patreon, the two hour version of this video is available for you guys now. So make sure to head over and check that out. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, social media tips for artists each Thursday, and artist blogs every weekend. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, Google+, all of those social media sites are linked below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and see real time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. On. I'll see you guys tomorrow. So it's funny how one person can say one thing and it completely changes your vocabulary. In my house, flamingos are now known as flamingos because one of you, Art of Raven D, made a joke about my flamingo with the bees on the intense drawing and said that the bees and the flamingos together were making flamingos. So now my husband and I only call flamingos flamingos because I draw them so often that word gets used a lot more in my house than the average household. So thanks, you ruined the word for me or made it more fun. Bok, bok.